Hey y'all, let's take a look at a couple of things here today. First off, well, we're talking about factorable denominators. Denominators, you know what those are. Factorable means you can pick them apart. We've done three types of factoring so far. Can you name them? Okay, well, we've done this type, right? Where you, somebody says, okay, x squared minus 7x. You go, oh, okay, I'll take the x out, and then that's going to be x minus 7. Okay, got it. That's the first type. We've also done where you see something like, you know, x squared plus 7x plus 12, the trinomial that you break into two binomials, right? x plus 4 times x plus 3, all right? The third type, can you remember that type? That's the difference of two squares, where you do something like that, okay? And you go, okay, that's going to be x plus 10 and x minus 10. <clears throat> so you know how to do all those three. What we're going to do is combine these with messing around with fractions, and uh, we'll, well, you'll see what happens when we do that, all right? Well, if you see something like this, for example, you know what to do, right? When you see, oh, we're going to try to get this into one fraction, and right? we just find the common denominator. In this case, it'd be, you know, what goes, or what do 1, 4, and 3 all go into? They go into 12, right? What do c squared, c cubed, and c to the fourth go, all go into? They go into c to the fourth, all right? So that is our common denominator. We would, you know, write three fractions, change the numerators so that it reflects what we've done to the denominators, the same thing, blah, 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 and there you go, okay? All right, so we're going to combine those, and let's look at the first type. If you want to pause it, go ahead and pause that and copy this down. All right, well, let's take a look. You look at this and you go, well, I mean, looks like this is my giant denominator and this is my other giant. Oh, I'm going to have to multiply this by this. Nah, don't do that yet. Let's take this denominator, in which they've always contrived these things to where they factor out for you nicely, and let's factor it. So, in other words, we're going to write the entire fraction over again. Okay, so this is going to be, and you tell me, how does this, how does this factor? It's times is to, uh, to give you a negative, so you know it's going to be a plus and a negative. So what's it break down to? It's a negative 1, which means it'll be positive 3 and negative 4, right? Okay, then we have minus, and then we have p times, <coughs> excuse me, x minus 4. Okay, now you can see now that we're going to be able to get a good denominator here, a common denominator, because this is the same as that. All we're missing on the right side is the x plus 3. So let's go ahead and do x plus 3 on the bottom. Of course, we do that. We've got to do x plus 3 on the top. So we have a new uh, single fraction, which is 6x minus p times x minus 3p. And that is your numerator. And the denominator is just written one time. That's all we need to do now. And x minus 4. There we go. That's all you need to do. Okay, let's try another one. So copy, pause, and copy. <coughs> All right, this is a little more, more of a stinker, as they say in college math classes, but let's look at this first. This can be factored. You re probably recognize that. That's going to be x, of course, and x, of course, and it's going to be multiplied to give you a minus, and so it's going to be plus and minus. Let's go ahead and stick my 7 there. All right, well, it's going to have to be what two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 and add to give you negative 5. Well, it's going to be 1 and negative 6. There we go. All right, this one is, I mean, you look at this, there's nothing you can do as far as like a trinomial. Uh, so you can just plot the greatest common factor, which is x, and you're left with x minus 6. Now, these guys have one in common, but the other two factors are not in common. You can tell that. Okay, so they have the x minus 6 in common, right? Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to say, well, we're going to need the x plus 1. We're going to need the x minus 6. We're also going to need the x. Okay, they're going to have to have all three of those to make them common denominators. All right, so this one needs an x, right? This one needs an x plus 1. Okay, so since we multiply the bottom by x here, we multiply it by there. Since we multiply the bottom by x plus 1, we multiply the top by x plus 1. Okay, all right. And let's kind of figure out the numerator first because we kind of know the denominator. So we have up here, let's just do it up here, 7x minus, and then we have 5x, and then we have minus, 5 plus 1 is positive 5, and minus that's going to be negative 5. Okay, so your numerator, if you break it down and, and add your like terms together, will be 2x, and minus 5, 
And here we go. That's going to be x. I'm going to put that up front because it's easier to see. x plus 1 and x minus 6. And there she blows. Okay. And if you ever, you know, have nothing to do, you can always, like, take some random number like, I don't know, 27. And stick it in here and in there and in there and in there and see what you get. And then try it and stick it, the same number, 27, in there and see if you get the same thing. If you do... That means you've absolutely wasted a lot of time and most of your life. Okay, here's another one. All right, pause it and copy. Well, this looks kind of familiar. You know that one on the left is going to be a trinomial. So let's do that first. Okay, so that's going to break down into two binomials. The multiply to give you negative 6. That means a plus and a minus. Add to give you positive 1. That means a 3 and a negative 2. And let's just go ahead and copy top here, 4x plus 2, <coughs> excuse me, and over here we have just a, you know, factor out the x deal, so that's going to be x times x plus 3, very happily this x plus 3 matches that one, there's a 4, okay, well we know we're going to need, um, let's try purple here, there. We, we're going to need the x in all three, and uh, all those, they're both denominators. We're going to need the x plus 3 in both denominators. We're going to need x minus 2 in both denominators. So let's go ahead and write, you know, we'll multiply this by x, and we'll multiply this by x as well, the whole thing, all right? This one needs to be multiplied by x minus 2, right? So there it is, x minus 2. Okay, well, let's try, try the top here. x times 4x is 4x squared plus 2x. Then we have minus 4x. And then minus 4 times, ooh, wait a second, negative 4 times negative 2, that'll be a positive 8 this time. Okay. We'll add our like terms. We'll get 4x squared and minus 2x and plus 8. And then our whole denominator is an x. There's an x plus 3. And there's an x minus 2. And that's all there is. Okay. Another one of these brilliant Saxon math lessons where he teaches you how to do this stuff. And you start doing it over and over until you feel like you're bored with it. You know, oh, I've already got this. Why do we keep doing that? Perfect. You learn it for new. You keep doing it. And you go, I got it. And then you keep doing it more. And between here and here, you get mastery. Absolute mastery. And then you're ready to take algebra two. And it's more of a piece of cake. And taking chemistry classes and college math classes. And you have no problem at all. So, all right. Okay. Pause it and try the practice problem. Okie doke, let's look at the bottom here. We got x, we got negative 7, and we got positive 3. All right, x plus 3. All right, and we got 9x here. And let's see here, we got x minus 7, and we got 7. Well, obviously, we're going to have to get ourselves a, an, uh, an x plus 3. So that happens there, and that happens there. And let's go ahead and slot these all together in the numerator. That's supposed to be a minus. Okay, so 9x minus 7x is what we're going to get. So it'll be 2x, right? Okay, negative 7 times positive 3 is negative 21, all right? Then the bottom, same old numerator, x minus 7, x plus 3, and there you go. Okay, we'll try one more. So pause that one and give B a whirl. Okie doke. I'll keep my 4, and I'll go x. That'll be x minus... Oops, that's not right. I need to change that. If I uh, have, let's see here, sorry about that. If I have two of these, they add up to positive 9 and they, excuse me, they multiply to give me positive 9 and they add to give me negative 10. It's going to have to be two negatives, right? So we're going to have to have two negatives. Here we go. That'll be minus 9 and a minus 1. And this will be 5 here. Oops. I'm going to do x here. And then this is going to be x. And then minus 1 here. Okay. Don't put 0 or anything like that. x times what is x? The answer is 1. Okay. All right. So there are our kind of odd factors here. We need an x in both. So we go like this. There's an x there. We put an x there. We need an x minus 9. We need an x minus 1. We only have an x minus 1 here, so we need an x minus 9. So we need to do this also, x minus 9. Okay, so 4x, let's just do this up here on the slide. 4x and then minus 5x, and then negative 5 times negative 9 is positive 45. So we have negative x up top, 
plus 45, and then x here, x minus 1, and x minus 9, and there you go. And uh, it's another happy day added to your account. So see you guys next time. Have a great day.